I feel like the art of planning is very hard to master. It's very easy to do too much and to do too little. So as a minimalist, I want a simple planning solution that doesn't take a lot of time. After a bit of trial and error, I have just that for you. All you're going to need are 10 minutes per day and a couple of extra minutes per week, as well as a calendar and note-taking app, or if you're taking the old school route, just your notebook. For you, I have also created three worksheets that you can use specifically with this planning routine that are going to be in the description down below. But if you're ready, let's get into the yearly planning. So I wanna start with the yearly planning and don't feel overwhelmed by that, even if it's not the 1st of January. I only have one step here and that is determining your three biggest goals for the next one year period. And that's because I want you to be an essentialist. Think about what you want to achieve ultimately, no matter if you're planning your year or your day. So to keep your eyes on that as an essentialist, the bare minimum is to at least know the three things that you want most. I'm gonna give an example here that you want a level B2 in Spanish, but this could be anything and you want to read 10 books. I'm gonna leave the third one open because I'm just going to keep it simple for this planning tutorial. And that's it, we can move on to the monthly planning. When thinking about the monthly planning, I divided it into two sections. Things that you should do this month, but you don't know when exactly, like little goals you have for the month and things that you should do this month and you know exactly when they are. So for the first bit, we have a little to-do section with not more than seven to 10 to-dos. And here is where you would write something like book summer vacation. You could also write that you want to go to the dentist. Essentially, these are things that you don't know when are happening, but you want to do them this month. And you can leave it at that and add new things as they come along. So don't feel the need to fill everything out. Once I'm done, I can just cross them off right over here. And another thing you need to think about is where do you want to get with your goals? I know it can be a little bit overwhelming to think in big goals and big steps like getting a level B2 in Spanish. It seems like a much bigger thing than just signing up for the course. So it's good to break things down. So for the Spanish, I'm just going to say that you want to sign up for the class. And about reading 10 books, I'm gonna say that you want to read one book. So this is just so that you will keep it in mind when you're doing your daily plans. You will keep returning to these monthly to-dos and remember, oh, okay, I need to at least sign up for the class to get my progress for the month moving. Now we get to the second part of the monthly planning, which is the schedule. This is essentially where you will write appointments, events, things that you know exactly when they are happening. So let's say your cat's birthday is on the 20th. And if you have another appointment, you can add it here as well. But as things come along, feel free to add things, to remove things. And of course, no need to fill this all out. It's dynamic. So this is really it for the monthly planning. It's just an overview of what you would like to do, how far you would like to get in your goals. And it's time to move on to the weekly planning. My goal with the weekly planning was just to give you a sense of theme in your days. What kind of to-dos you have for each day of the week so that you can batch them together to save yourself traffic time, to save yourself from changing outfits or whatever. So let's say that you have, first of all, you have to see if there are any monthly to-dos you can fit into your week. You have to book a vacation and you have to go to the dentist. So maybe you want to do this that week and you can say, you can call the dentist and he will say, okay, I have some time on Wednesday at 9 a.m. You will write that down and you don't feel like booking the vacation. So the next question here is, is there anything new you want to do? And you realize that you want to go shopping and also you want to go to the library. So you see that on Wednesday you have the dentist 
the power of this is that if you want to go shopping, you decide that, okay, I will be at the city on Wednesday. So it's actually good to combine it with shopping. You don't have to write what time it's going to be. Just have an idea of what days you're doing what. And what did I say? You want to go to the library. Let's say you decide to go on Friday to the library. So now if something new comes up, you're going to see that on Friday you're at the library. Say that study group comes up. If you decide to go, you can say I'll be there on Friday because that will save you time from going from somewhere else to the library because you're already there. And that's really what I wanted to achieve with this weekly view, nothing too much, nothing too overwhelming. And of course, remember if you have any appointments from the monthly view, those also have to be considered. So let's say it's the week of your cat's birthday and your cat's birthday is on a Saturday. You can carry it over here just so you don't forget, or you can leave it in the monthly schedule if you trust yourself to not forget. And that's it. Now we can move on to the last part, which is the daily planning, and then you are set. So far, all of the planning that we did, you could do on a digital notebook, except for the schedule. That's something that you can do with Google Calendar or another calendar application. For the daily planning, I also suggest for the schedule to use a calendar application. And for the to-dos, you can either use another notebook kind of application or you can use a to-do app. But I wanted to add both options to your daily planning just to show you the power of both seeing your day visually as a schedule and knowing what you have to do because I think it's like calorie counting. After you have seen the calories a couple of times after you counted them, you have much more awareness. When you're planning your food, you know, how much of any given thing you can put. So it's the same thing with your schedule. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that you work from eight to 12. You can do these squares or you can do it in a different way. I just make the squares as an example and you work here as well. Here is your lunch break. You can do something in the lunch break. For example, you can read because you wanted to read for read one book this month. So let's say today you want to read for 20 minutes. You can put this in your lunch break. But having the schedule in front of you, you see that you don't have space to put 10 to do's. Realistically, you can put maybe maybe five to do's depending on how big they are, how much time they will take. Let's have a look at your weekly to do. Let's say it's Wednesday. You have the dentist. No, okay, no. <laughs> let's say it's Friday and you have to go to the library as well to study. So let's say you have a library and if you put it here, you see the amount of time it will take and you realize with your to-do list, today you can't go with that many to-dos. And while to-dos are great to cross them off, to keep a track of what you have done, the schedule is good to have a visual representation of how much time you really have that day and how much time you want to spend on something. I think if you're just looking at the to-dos, you're not necessarily seeing the time, you are seeing the amount of things you have to do. So now you will be able to see that one or two to-dos tops because you don't have any more time will be for the day. So let's say you also want to do a stretch and you want to watch a movie. So you will be able to see that you can stretch in the morning here, stretch, and that you can watch the movie after 10, but that's it. That's all you can do realistically that day. So you can fill one side or both. You can be just a to-do list person, just a scheduled person. I recommend trying to do both for some time just to get that visual aspect. And of course, check for any pre-scheduled to-dos from your monthly view or your weekly view, depending on if you carried them over. But really, that's it. I don't think you need anything more to do your planning. I don't think if you are a minimalist, if you're an essentialist, I don't think there's anything missing. And 
I mean, probably there are some personal improvements you can make to this. So I would love to hear what you would add in the comments. What would you do to make it yours? And if you're, again, if you're interested in downloading my templates for this, I have three different versions. They're not all with these colors and these flowers on them. There's also very, very minimal ones. You can download them in the description down below. And please tell me what you think about this. How can we improve it? Did you like it? Would you try it? And if you're interested in other videos on self-improvement and minimalism, you are welcome to stay and watch a few more videos on my channel. Maybe subscribe, maybe leave a like. Um, but I would be glad to see you again. Also, you haven't seen my cat yet, so you have a few videos to watch. And I will see you next week. I wish you all the very best.